My name is Marcello Gortan. I'm one of the co-founders of Tennis. And uh, before we begin, I just want to quickly thank McMillan and thank everyone who is joining us today uh, for putting the time aside to learn and discuss a little bit more about uh, design process and accessibility, something that we are uh, both very passionate about. So we're excited to have this discussion. So before we begin, um, a couple things that we're going to be talking about. So I'm going to give you a quick little introduction to who I am and my business partner, Simon, who's also on the uh, on the call with us, and who Tennis is. Um, then we'll talk a little bit about why accessibility is important. Um, and then we really want to focus some time on practical examples of what some of the design outcomes are for um, some of the specific uh, accessibility guidelines that Paul mentioned. So who is Tennis? Tennis is a UX design and strategy company. Um, our purpose is to help businesses unite humans and technology through design. My name is Marcello Bertano. I'm the co-founder and executive director. My business partner, Simon, is with us today, and he is our design director. Um, Simon will be walking us through some very specific examples using some websites that we've designed and some websites that are just best case examples of um, WCAG 2.0 compliance so that you can see some actual visual examples of what some of these compliance line items mean. Simon and I have been in this space as entrepreneurs and freelancers for roughly 10 years. Um, universal design is really a core part of our process and, and in our context what universal design means is it's really equitable access of digital services and products. So accessibility has been a core part of our design process uh, for roughly the, the full 10 years. Um, and 10 years ago when we were um, talking about accessibility design with organizations, and compliance, or no one really knew what was going on. And, and I, I think it's still a bit of a challenge for organizations to understand from a design and technical perspective what some of these compliance rules mean. Fast forward 10 years, and as Paul had mentioned, we're, there's never been a greater migration to digital than now. Uh, there's been a whole host of challenges that we've been hearing from organizations from work from home, client facing uh, websites and tools, and this migration to digital is not going away anytime soon. So it's really important that we consider accessibility within web design for multiple reasons. Our stance has always been that from a moral and ethical perspective, there's no doubt that um, a continuous and conscientious effort to design and deliver accessibly, accessibility compliant digital experiences is a good thing and the right thing to do. But it's also just a great business practice, um, designing and considering accessibility in web-based projects and products just genuinely creates a better user experiences for all audiences. Um, and not only that, from a business performance uh, perspective, uh, there's also a lot, of, um, a lot of interesting research that's showing that organizations that invest in good design process outperform their peers. As Paula mentioned before, 6.2 million Canadians have at least one disability that limits their daily activities, including the use of web. That's about one in five Canadians. This group represents approximately 55 billion in purchasing power annually and, ex and is expected to represent about 40% of Canadians by 2035. 71% of customers with disabilities will leave a website if it's too difficult for them to navigate. And through research, uh, a majority have said they're willing to pay more for the same product uh, from another organization if it offers an excellent web experience. A lot of these, that, that trend is, is in line with general UX uh, and universal design trends. Audiences, customers are demanding more out of digital experiences and more out of the overall brand experience. And um, there's a lot of data around how organizations that actually invest in meeting those expectations are, again, uh, excelling. As a, as a UX design company, Universal Design is a core tenet of our overall philosophy, uh, and it should be for all organizations. Today, we're specifically talking about marketing, external, externally facing marketing sites, and those are kind of, uh, those are the examples that we're using, but accessibility design is important for all digital and web products. Technology will continue to drive change and competition at a pace that may feel like we're always playing catch up and demands a high level of responsiveness and agility. The big risk is that if we continue moving at this pace to deploy web products, we're going to eventually start leaving behind the actual users and the user experience. And we need to really spend some time 
on that part of our deployments and strategy because it takes a, a certain degree of diligence to truly understand users and um, success of digital products uh, and how well they, they perform in the market depend very heavily on the user experience. Companies that excel in the design process will outpace their competitors now and into the future. Uh, McKinsey did a really interesting study called the McKinsey Design Index, which basically ranked large organizations across industries by their design capabilities over a few years. What they found was that businesses that ranked in the top quartile of their MDI score outperformed competitors by double. So as we progress further into this digital world, it's going to become more and more important and it's going to become very vital that accessibility is part of that process. Ultimately, the message that we really want to drive is that accessible design is an important part of the holistic design process and building out an inclusive and accessible design process, whether you do it internally or externally, can be a huge differentiator factor, differentiating factor within your business.